Parker. Great having you back on the program. It's been too long. How have you been, sir? I'm doing well, Mike. You're right. It has been too long. We need to make this a consistent thing. I, I enjoy Mike. being on the radio with you. I love your attitude, your perspective, and the depth of knowledge that you bring to your listeners. You're very kind, and of course, the feeling is mutual. We need strong, solid leadership with a steady hand. I'm so glad to hear the news that, that you're going to be part of this presidential task force to reopen the economy. May I first begin by saying that millions of us are praying for you and all of our leaders on both sides of the aisle, because this is this is such a tough, tough decision to make. I'm sure you're, you're, you confront this um, regularly, how do you how do we reopen this country? How do we restart the economy without jeopardizing lives? Absolutely, a great question, Mike. I will say thank you first and foremost for your prayers, your optimism, and your thoughtful approach to the question. The truth is, the president has set out really important guidelines. The first one, uh, as I, I love the guidelines, by the way. The first one is is we see the Cases drop and the hospital co capacity in areas expand. We know we can meet the needs of the folks from a healthcare crisis. And frankly, because the cases are falling in certain areas of our country, there won't be the needs uh, out there that we will have to meet. But at the same time, the cases are dropping. What he says is he wants to make sure that the hospital capacity is high in those areas that are looking to phase in or roll in the economy, their economy back into play. Two very important points. And the third one is we will continue to isolate hotspots to mitigate the spread, and that will cause us to have a very fluid reopening. And finally, talking to the president yesterday, as well as Secretary Mnuchin, they both acknowledge that testing, testing, testing is foundational for their approach. And they anticipate the number that I hear often is 20 million plus serology tests in, in May. So mm -hmm. the president is balancing, and it is difficult for all of us on the task force, he's balancing living and livelihood, poverty has a devastating multi-generational impact, and a recession that falls into a depression is as dangerous, I believe, as where we are today. Senator, is it is it difficult not to get swept up in the rhetoric and the hyperbole of, I mean, over the weekend, uh, Speaker Pelosi gave the president an F rating for the way he has responded to this. You hear the constant drumbeat in the mainstream media. This is all the president's fault, Republicans, and uh, Fox News is killing people. Is that is it is it easy or, or difficult for you to, to kind of let that roll off your back and ignore that kind of vicious rhetoric? I would say in 2016, this would be very difficult. In 2020, it's much easier. What we've learned over the last four years, President wins his election in 2016. January 2017, Washington Post says the impeachment process has begun. Mm -hmm. What we know for sure is that much of the national media has bought into the narrative that the president must go. So taking what they say with a grain of salt is significantly easier to do today than it was in 2017. I remain a strong proponent of the president's approach because, frankly, it is evident that it's working. Uh, Representative Dan Crenshaw, former Special Forces individual, a good man from Texas, chronicled the media's mishap in this coronavirus on a Twitter right. tweet earlier. It was fantastic. And frankly, when the president was saying we must close our borders, everybody else yeah. was saying, no, no, no. I, I heard you talking about Nancy Pelosi earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And Nancy's like, come to Chinatown. And what you said was so thoughtful. Let us not demonize anyone, but let's clearly point the fingers at yourselves, Speaker Pelosi. And, and national media, not at the president. And the right. just chronicling what has happened under President Trump's leadership from the containment strategy to the mitigation strategy has been powerful and has saved millions of lives at the very least. And so I take what I hear from national media. I try my best not to watch uh, too many stations, frankly. <laughs> and so uh, I'm, I'm insulated from the foolishness by just not turning my channel from I won't even say them, but there are only a couple of stations I watch. Yeah. 
I hear you. Well, I'm, I, there's one way to get your blood pressure down, and that's to read your new book, Opportunity Knocks. You talk about the opportunity zones to help kids who are in poverty. Uh, we've got so much breaking news today as well. I want to get you back soon. Let's. I'm going to take you up on, on your kind offer to join us regularly because your book, Opportunity Knocks, How Hard Work, Community, and Business Can Improve Lives and End Poverty. You mentioned Dan Crenshaw. There's also a terrific leader out of South Carolina that we admire very much, Senator Tim, Tim Scott. Good luck with this task force and the tough decisions you have ahead of you. And again, we're praying hard for you, sir. Thank you. Great day. Thank you, sir. Senator Tim Scott joining us here on the Mike Gallagher Show.